Superman Escape is an intense launch coaster at Warner Brothers Movie World in Australia. This is an intimate accelerator coaster, and it's one of the best of the genre. This one is the familiar hydraulic launch, but it features some awesome theming and a satisfying layout chock full of airtime. In this video, I will review Superman and compare the experience to the other accelerator coasters out there. By the mid 2000s, Movie World was in desperate need of a signature thrill coaster. At the time, the park only had three coasters. Lethal Weapon the Ride was the park's biggest coaster by far, and while it looked appealing, this Vacoma SLC was a horrifically rough ride by all accounts. The park's other two coasters were far tamer. You had the Scooby Doo Spooky Coaster Indoor Wild Mouse, and the Roadrunner Jr. Roller Coaster. Village Roadshow, the park's owner, announced $65 million of additions to their parks in 2005, and the headlining attraction was Superman Escape. This would open up on Boxing Day as Australia's tallest and fastest full circuit coaster. The ride was placed in the site of the Movie Magic special effects show and Looney Tunes musical review. This placement forever changed the entry experience at Movie World. Superman's top has framed perfectly with the entry archway and fountain. It makes for one heck of a first impression once you enter the park. The bright red track and royal blue supports really pop. And to top it all off, you have the trains. They are your familiar intimate accelerator coaster trains, with one key thematic touch. There's a Superman statue in the back that appears to be pushing the train. It is so neat to see. There is a viewing area in the center of the coaster giving a full 360 degree view of the outdoor portion, but this may look radically different in the near future. The park is strongly rumored to be receiving Wet n Wild's former surf rider roller coaster, and it's expected to be placed smack dab in the center of Superman. The interaction of these two rides will be really exciting to see. When you actually want to ride Superman, you first will need to make a pit stop at the lockers. Nothing can ride with you. All bags, and even things in your pockets, even zippered pockets, must go in a locker. These are complimentary while you ride, and they're large enough to fit most items. Now I heard the park used to require riders to store glasses in the lockers as well, since you cannot wear them on the ride. This was because you load and unload in a separate area. I get why this was done for convenience purposes for the staff, but it meant you could be partially blind waiting in the queue line. Fortunately, the park now allows you to keep your glasses with you right up until you board. At that point, you place them in a basket and it'll be waiting for you at the exit. Not having your phone with you causes two minor inconveniences. First, if Superman has a lengthy wait, and that is a common occurrence in busy days, you will have to wait through the entire queue line without your phone. And this section is a big series of switchbacks, so it's not all that exciting. I wish the storage area for your belongings was right before you board like most rides. Additionally, if you have a virtual queue return time, you need to go find an employee to scan your phone's QR code. They then give you a physical ticket. You then need to go to the locker area to store everything. Then you give your ticket to the employee to enter the virtual queue lane. The virtual queue is the best way to avoid a long wait at Superman. It is a free service included with your park ticket. You can reserve one ride at a time in the park app. Once your time is called, you have a half hour to return. Once you use your password expires, you can book another and you are free to keep booking Superman over and over if you'd so like. Return times will run out on busy days for this ride, so make sure to grab one early. The other way to skip the queue is to purchase Fast Track. This is a pricey skip the line pass, but it can be a major time saver if the park is slammed. You are routed right into the station using the same lane as the virtual queue. You can either purchase the full system, which gives you one time access to all the park's major rides, or you can purchase single shots. The latter costs roughly 20 to 30 Australian dollars depending on the day. Finally, you can head here first thing in the morning. Most people seem to start with DC Rivals, so you can usually snag a ride or two before most people make their way over here. Now on days with inclement weather, prioritize Superman when it isn't raining. These accelerator coasters typically cannot operate in any degree of precipitation, and I imagine Superman is similar. When you reach the end of the queue line, you are assigned a row. 
Whether or not seating requests will be accommodated depends on the employee. Some strictly assign seats front to back, while others would allow you to request or wait for a specific row. I think the front and back cars are the best seats, but there are no bad rows on this coaster. Superman has a five car train. Each car has two rows of two, so each train holds a maximum of 20 riders. The coaster has two trains. Both were in use when I visited, but I've heard the park has a tendency to run just one on slower days. This can cause the line to move rather slowly. That's especially true because the dispatches are not all that fast to begin with. To be clear, I do not fault the employees. I think it's the policies they're given. First, there usually was a delay grouping guests. Unlike many rides of a designated grouper, the one on Superman was also loading trains. Making it worse, that same employee also had to go over to the unload platform to clear out the trains. And any time a train advanced from the unload or load platform, the employee had to be by their console in case of an e-stop. Second, the employees had to walk the train multiple times while loading. The first pass is when they check the restraints. They then come back a second time with the aforementioned bin to collect any glasses. They then need to move the bin over to the unload area. The silver lining with the slower operations is that it puts less wear and tear on the launch system. These hydraulic launch coasters are notoriously unreliable due to all their moving parts. The ones in the US are prone to frequent breakdowns. However, I did not see Superman go down even once in my time at the park. Once seated, you'll find over-the-shoulder restraints similar to Six Flags Great Adventure's King to Ka. You have a hard bar across your lap and thin bars over your shoulders. I wish the coaster had soft straps like Storm Runner or lap bars like some of Intamin's other launch coasters. But Superman's restraints are comfortable enough. The ride is quite smooth, so head banging is not a major issue. There's only one or two spots where you could possibly chop your neck, and you'll hit rather weakly if you do. The load platform is themed as a subway station for the Metropolis Rapid Transit. Once dispatched, you hear audio of worsening tremors come overhead, and you are told to advance to the next station and that radio broadcast continues right up to the main launch. You then move through a dark ride segment. It's quite impressive between its length and practical effects. This section isn't gravity driven, and that was a wise decision. The drive tires move the train at a slow pace so you can appreciate all the details. The dark ride section starts off with a dark tunnel of flashing lights. You then pass a series of lockers that are falling over and shaking. Then you pass a set of stairs that are flooding. From what I understand, this is the most finicky effect, but it was working when I recently wrote it after a refurbishment. These first few effects remind me of Universal's former disaster ride. Then you pass some large wrecked police cars. The situation looks bleak. You round a corner and come to a stop. You will hear Superman and he says he'll push you out of there. The whole build up to the launch is spectacular. It is rare to get this level of immersion and theming on a thrill coaster, but I love when it happens. Once Superman stops talking, the hydraulic launch kicks in, and this is a very forceful acceleration. You go from 0 to 62 miles per hour, or 100 kilometers per hour, in just 2 seconds. I think the larger accelerator coasters have a slightly stronger kick to them, but this launch beats most other propulsion methods handily. You whiz down the track, and the sense of speed is enhanced by its position. The launch takes place in a darkened tunnel, and you have a head chopper some track above you as well. Once you're outside, you blast up a 130 foot or 40 meter tall top hat. I was actually surprised to learn the top hat was this short. It looks and feels way taller than that. The train does slow down mightily over the apex, but rest assured, you still get some aggressive airtime. The airtime is similar to what you get in Hershey Park Storm Runner's top hat. Those up front get very strong ejector airtime over the top. Then those in back get some lift going up. Then they are launched skywards in the descent. And that drop has an added surprise to it. It sort of twists right, so you get a nice lateral kink with those negative Gs. The pullout is powerful. You are smothered with positive Gs and rocking around a low turn. This was an automatic gray out for me in each ride. 
This is the one transition in the ride where you could possibly tap your head in the harness, so brace yourself accordingly. The rest of the layout feels like Alton Towers' Rita, or Hyda Park's Desert Race, just scaled way up. The next element is a giant camelback, and you fly over this. Every single row gets some thigh crushing and sustained ejector airtime. I think this hill may have better airtime than a single hill on DC Rivals, which is no small feat. I also think this has the best airtime of any of the accelerator coasters. You then head indoors for a brief but fast turn. You get a great head chopper piercing through the building, and the speed is enhanced by mist effects. This seamlessly leads into a large S hill. This offers a few more seconds of good ejector airtime. You then zip around another low turn. It's not as forceful as the first, but it is very fast, and it still has quite a bit of power to it. You then jump up into the brakes. I expected this transition to offer one last bit of airtime, but you slow down before that can happen. Nonetheless, you still slam into the brakes with a full head of steam, and if you're like me, you'll be breathless. Superman has 2,490 feet, or 760 meters of track. That is not a lot of length in the grand scheme of things, especially since a decent chunk of it is occupied by the dark ride section, yet this accelerator coaster feels more complete than others. While some have just a launch and top hat, Superman has that, plus some extra turns and airtime hills. The coaster section feels like a hybrid of Storm Runner, Rita, and Desert Race. You have the speed, pacing, and top hat of Storm Runner, with the crossover hills of Rita or Desert Race but those hills are noticeably larger and more intense than Superman. There is no dead spots in the outdoor section. It is a rush. So what would I rate Superman Escape? I'll give this launch coaster a 9.5 out of 10. This is a fantastic coaster. It starts with the theming and story. The dark ride segment would fit in at a Disney or Universal Park with all those practical effects. Then the main coaster bit is exhilarating. The hydraulic launch, Airtime hills and low turns are all powerful. I wish the outdoor bit had a few extra elements to it, but this still is a lot more to it than most other accelerator coasters. So how does it compare to those other accelerator coasters? Superman cannot beat Formula Rosa of Ferrari World, but that ride is admittedly a cheat code with its absurd speed and length. But it does beat out Storm Runner for second place in my opinion. So those are my thoughts on Superman Escape at Warner Brothers Movie World. What are your thoughts on this Intamin launch coaster? How do you think it compares to the other launch coasters out there? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.